If you need to write lots of questions for Moodle, the very quickest way to do so is into a text file format called GIFT format. GIFT is great because it's very quick to develop lots and lots of questions, but it's quite difficult to read and write, particularly if you're new to it. So there's some complexity here, um, and that complexity grows as you get more complex with the questions that you're trying to write. So in order to simplify things, I've written a little program into my preferred editor, which is Sublime Text. I'm going to show you Sublime Text now. Here it is here. I've created a modified or simplified version of GIFT and then a piece of uh, software that runs within Sublime Text to convert that into a proper GIFT output ready for Moodle. But before we can get to that, let's first install the um, Sublime Text plugin. With this recording, I'll provide you with a link. That link is to a zip file. And when you un download and unzip that, you'll end up with these sets of files. One of these is a sample GIFT file, and it gives you a kind of the basic instructions and anatomy of how to create your own GIFT files. Importantly, however, there is this folder. This folder contains the plugin that we'll need to add to our Sublime Text. Okay, so I'm going to go back into Sublime Text. I'm going up to the Sublime Text menu, down to Preferences, and then to Browse Packages. And this is the folders that store all of the, effectively the plugins or add-ons to uh, Sublime Text. So I'm going to now copy this folder and all of its contents and paste it into the Packages folder. I'm doing this on a Mac. Of course, you can repeat these same steps on a Windows machine. You should notice then that this process gift folder is in here, along with all the other folders that might be present in your Sublime Text. OK, so now that we've installed the plugin, we're pretty much ready to start. I'm going to relaunch my uh, Sublime Text just to make sure that that plugin has been properly deployed. So I'm going to quit it and then relaunch it. And here we are ready to go. OK, we're back in Sublime Text. We'll know whether that plugin has been installed because if you turn to the Tools menu, you'll now see a new menu item. Bertioz process gift file. It also has a keyboard shortcut, and that will speed things up if you're doing a lot of this type of work. On screen, I've got a for example kind of simplified gift file. So this is in my simplified writing schema. Uh, the first of these questions is a true false question. I know that we're not using them, but I'll explain the anatomy of them anyway. And you'll notice here it's quite simple. It starts with these curly braces, the T or F to indicate true or false. Close curly braces, and that's that question written. As we move down to some more complex questions, this is a multiple choice. The multiple choice in this instance has three alternate answers, and the correct answer is indicated with an equal sign. There's a variant of the multiple choice, which is a multiple response, which one or more of the following is correct. And in this example, we've got four correct answers and three incorrect answers. And you'll notice quite simply that each correct answer has an equal sign in front of it. So again, really quick to write these. As we go down, here is a matching question type. Matching can be great for terms and definitions. Also really good for process flow. You can have labeling activities where you've got one, two, three, four, and the answers corresponding to those numbers. So this is a pretty versatile question type. And you'll see it's really easy again to write. You simply write the term, an equal sign, and definition, for example. So you can see really quickly how those things align and match. And the final example is a paragraph question. Remember the paragraph questions are long response. They can't be marked by a computer and have to be marked by the teacher. And therefore, you'd want to use these fairly judiciously. But when you do, all you simply do is open and close the curly braces with nothing inside them. And that's that question type written. So you can see with a, a really um, sort of basic understanding of this modified gift file, it's very, very quick to write. But the real magic happens when you process this ready for Moodle. And this is where the plugin does the heavy lifting for you. So if I go up to the tools menu and choose this process gift file option, what happens now is the screen is split in two. I have my original simplified version on the left hand side. I have the gift file that is ready for upload into Moodle on the right hand side. And you'll notice that this file has some changes to it. 
The first thing that's happened is that uh, the programming has auto named and auto numbered each question. Now, naming within GIFT is a bit tricky. You start with two colons, you give the question a name, and you close those two colons. But of course, you don't have to remember that because that this programming has solved that problem. And you can see quite quickly that what it's done is to simply auto number each question. So that's one less thing that you have to think about. But more importantly, it's what it's done inside each question. So here is our multiple choice question. And you'll notice that the correct answer is still indicated with the equals, but the incorrect answers have all got this tilde symbol in front of them. That's the, the requirement for gift. But again, you don't have to remember that because you simply write it in this easier format on the left-hand side. But I think this is where the real payoff is. It's when you come to questions which have multiple responses. And this is a tricky piece of work. So if you recall, if you're doing these questions directly into Moodle in the native editor, what you need to do is not only indicate which are the correct answers, but also get either positive or negative percentage mark for each and every alternative. We can see here, for example, that there are four correct answers. So what the programming has done is to work out the percentages to say, okay, when there are four correct answers, each answer should be given a mark of 25%. Trickier still is these negative answers. There are three incorrect answers. And so each one of those incorrect answers is given in essence, minus 33 and a third percentage. Now the logic here, by the way, is if a student was to simply try and game the system, just tick every box and hope for the best, these positive and negative percentage figures balance out to zero. So they'll effectively get no marks for that question. So that very difficult intellectual process of working out percentages, trying to balance the equations is all done for you with this programming. As we move now down to the matching question type, you'll see it's reformatted that into the format that GIF requires, which again is a bit more complex, but we don't have to worry about that because we write them over here and it just sorts itself out over here. So that's it. Now, of course, because we've still got this file open, the original file, we can make some edits and see what the impact is. So for instance, maybe I'm going to add another answer, another correct answer here. I'll just quickly modify the question accordingly. So there we are, I've changed the question. I'm gonna rerun the program. This time I'm gonna use a keyboard shortcut. And you'll notice now that that question has been correspondingly updated over on the right hand side. So now that the percentage figures are 20%, there are five 20% correct answers. And so of course, this is very, very quick to make adjustments to the questions because you don't have to each time rethink how to parse all of the percentage figures. The programming deals with that for you. There's some other uh, nice additions that I think are valuable to the project. One is to be able to automatically add questions to categories. There's a syntax for this, but you don't have to remember that because there's a sample file that I send with you that has an example and it's here. So I'm just gonna copy this across and then change it. Paste it in the top. So it just starts with dollar, category, colon, and then whatever your categories are. So for instance, I always start with the unit of composite code. And perhaps this is topic one. So I've put that in, I'm gonna run my program again. And now what you'll notice is it's incorporated the category detail into the question naming. So for instance, this is now the unit competence code, topic one, question two. The rationale here is that if you were to take any question in isolation, move it into the wrong folder, for instance, wrong category, it's very clear what its purpose was. It belongs to this unit of competency, it belongs to this topic, and it's the second question in that topic. You can even use the same file to write questions for multiple topics. So for instance, in this case, maybe the first three questions belong to topic one, perhaps lower down, these last two belong to topic two. So I'm just gonna put that information in and then I'm gonna rerun the program again. And if we turn our attention now to the output on the right-hand side, 
you'll notice that the naming and numbering convention, we can see that these first three questions belong to topic one. And then when we've got down to topic two, we can see that it's effectively started the numbering again. And so then within every topic and subtopic, it resets the numbering and therefore everything is ready now for us to upload into Moodle. Now behind the scenes, the programming's already done the heavy lifting of creating a file ready for upload for you. It's named it here and it's saved it into the same folder as the original file. So this is the newly created file. You'll notice that it has underscore gift in the file name and it's this file that you can upload into Moodle. So here I am logged into Moodle. I go up to the cog. I go down to the question bank area, open that up and choose the import option. From here, we're going to select, of course, the GIFT file format. And if you scroll the screen down, there's an area to upload your file. So if you recall, the programming created for us the file that we need. It has underscore GIFT in its file name. So I simply drag that, drop that into here and press the import button. And in a few short moments, we now have, in this case, five new questions uploaded into Moodle. Importantly, those questions have also been added to various categories. So for instance, I have the category for the unit of competency. Within that, I've got topics one and two, and you can see in brackets the number of questions. So there's three questions in topic one and two questions in topic two, which matches what we've uploaded. If I go to the parent category, which in this case is called the unit code, it will list for me here all the questions that have been uploaded. And I can sort those questions by clicking on the question heading. Notice now that these are in sort order. You can see the five questions. You can see that they've been numbered. The little icon that's just to the left of each question indicates its question type. Is it true, false? We have a multiple choice, multiple choice, matching and paragraph question type. And of course, we can preview any of these questions by just clicking on the preview symbol, which is the magnifying glass. So for instance, if I choose this one here, I'm just going to move that back onto screen for you. You can see here is our um, question, which has the five organs of the digestive system. What I didn't mention as we were doing the recording is you remember when we're writing questions, we didn't think too hard about trying to randomize the choices. There's no need to, because Moodle does that for us. So you'll see that even though we wrote them in a particular order, that is jumbled up when we get to Moodle. So there you have it. We've quickly authored, in this case, five questions. They've been uploaded into Moodle. They have function as designed. It would then be a matter, of course, of creating a quiz out of these questions. Um, I think you know how to do that quite easily now. But the heavy lifting piece of writing the questions is the bit which this programming makes very much easier for you.